There were 5,346,740 black baby boys born around the world. And today, one of them is standing right here in front of you. Hi, for those of you who don't know, my name is Josh Nelson and I'm a student here at Choi High School. Um, let me start off with a little bit of black history of my own. On September 9, 2005, I was born in Gritman Medical Hospital. I grew up in a completely white family. Yes, you heard me right. I get my color from my, uh, my biological dad, but I've never met him. I live right here in Troy on a beautiful cherry orchard, um, and I grew up for most of my early childhood. I grew up in the church and learned to be close to God uh, and keep my faith at all times. I was a happy kid overall. I started my travels when I was just six. We moved from Troy to Newport, Oregon, where my mom owned and ran a coffee shop. After a few years, we moved to Pendleton, Oregon, where my mom met a boyfriend, Joel Simpson. Uh, after a few years, my mom was engaged. I was about to have a stepdad for the first time in my life. In fact, he was going to adopt me as one of his own. Unfortunately, he got sick and passed away in less than a week. After this, my mom and I moved back to Troy, Idaho uh, to live with my grandparents for support. At this point in my life, I really started to notice the color of my skin. Most importantly, the spots on my hands. I started going, uh, the spots on my hands and, and my hair. I started going to Bliss Hills Christian School when I was bullied for being black. Yes, you heard me right. Bullied for being black at a Christian school. Um, they would pull on my hair because they knew that it was curly and tight and that any simple force uh, would turn my scalp red. They took pencils to my hands and carved Mongolian spots. Uh, they carved symbols in my Mongolian spots in my hands. And I don't know if you can see them, they've kind of faded, but they're on my right hand. And uh, lots of kids. Uh, this was enough for me to move schools in fifth grade to Troy Elementary School, and as they say, the rest is history. Throughout my life, I've come across many different stereotypes. For example, dogs versus cats. <laughs> now, I've always been a dog person because they're supposed to be like man's best friend. But on the contrary, cats are fluffy little demon scratch balls. <laughs> now, stereotypes are defined as a widely held and fixed oversimplified image or idea of a particular type of person or thing. These things make up categories that we hold dear from food to animals to teachers to even the colors of our binders. But most commonly out of all of these is the black person stereotype. We all know it, whether we're ashamed of knowing it or not. Fried chicken, watermelon, grape Kool-Aid, drugs, guns, the people who can jump high. Uh, this stereotype has been plaguing black history since the dawn of time. And what people need to realize is that while this stereotype may have been true at some points in life, it has quickly faded and is not the same for everyone. So let's look at where black people were before, after, and enduring the so-called stereotype. 1619, the concept of slavery hits America. To satisfy the labor needs of the North American uh, white colonies, white European settlers moved from low-cost servants to cheaper, uh, more resourceful and genetically stronger people, the African Americans. A privateer or Dutch ship, uh, Dutch ship named the White Lion brought 20 enslaved Africans to Jamestown, Virginia from Portugal. They were instantly put to work just like any other servant. But after close examination of this new species, it was seen that they could do a lot more. Uh, Americans, uh, African Americans were only getting out of the tribal area at this point, so they had no idea of the concept of money, and they were very polite to the uh, white settlers. In fact, they wanted to work for them. Um, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were given slaves at this time, but they were very against the, uh, the use of slaves in and out of the home, but mainly the home. This idea of slaves working outside of the home brought up an interesting idea. In 1791, 180-some years later, the cotton industry was thrown about. Clothes were not mass-produced. With new inventions being created, uh, like the cotton gin by Eli Whitney, African Americans were paid none if little because inventions seemed like enough to please them. Uh, the efficient new idea quickly ran out the uh, standard white servant workers. And soon African American workers took over tobacco, clothing, wood, shoe, cotton, cash, and rice production all in one sweep. It was really work and there was no break. But finally, on a hot, humid night in August of 1831, 
Nat Turner, a local cotton plantation worker, took a stand. It is said that he is the founder of black protest. He struck fear into the eyes of the white settlers for the first time since the dawn of slavery. He was born in Virginia and inherited an early hatred towards slavery from his mother, and he felt that he was anointed by God to lead his people out of bondage. Yet he and a few of his buddies killed their owners and their families before he entered into Jamestown, killing 60-some of the white, uh, white folks in that town. He was eventually, they were eventually arrested, but Turner went, uh, went on the run. He was on the run for six weeks and was eventually found cut, fatigued, declothed, and close to the shore. He was captured, tried, and hung in less than six hours. After that incident, the slave import was very slow. Boats could not bring in as many slaves at the same time anymore. The reason was that the news, uh, newspapers were required to be on Dutch ships so that the African Americans and the, uh, the boat drivers could read them. The problem was, after the African Americans had heard about what happened to Nat Turner, it was better for them to jump into the frigid waters that were way below freezing than to see what was waiting for them in Jamestown. From this, the Underground Railroad began. Many African Americans began escaping the South and hiding out in Connecticut looking for a better life. John Brown, being one of the many, struggled to support his large family because of his color. He gathered around 50 of his men and went back through uh, the railroad to a boat dock in Virginia. The objective was to collect enough ammo and men to lead a uh, to lead a strong protest against the Southerners. Unfortunately, he was captured and hung, despite the ruling of the anti-slavery Republican Abraham Lincoln. Booker T. Washington would be the next big hit. He founded the, N uh, the NAACP, or the National Asso uh, Association of Assortment of Colored People, uh, oh, of Advancement of Colored People. Uh, he, he kept up Uh, and he wrote many books and letters and articles. Booker would lead several protests, eventually leading up to the Civil War. And Lincoln could no longer um, keep the question of slavery just hanging around. So he decided to give four million enslaved people their free freedom. Become, uh, and this eventually earned him the title of Honest Abe. From this, African Americans became an important part in music and sports. You all know Jackie Robinson. The first baseball player to make the first black baseball player to make it to the majors. Bessie Smith, a jazz singer, also made a very good impression on the world. Black people across the country had finally started to fit into civilization. There was only one problem: African Americans were now separate, but separate does not uh, does not equal equal. The Brown versus, versus the Board of, Ed of Education put an end to this in 1954. After uh, after several protests. And it being chased away by fire hoses and long court cases, the judge had no further choice than to stop the segregation of schools, a yet another huge milestone in African American history. One December day in 1955, a lady uh, of 42 who was a, uh, a shoemaker by the name of Rosa Parks enters the bus in Montgomery, Alabama. She's only worked six hours that day, and she's very alert. She sits in the first few rows of the bus, and after a few moments, she's approached by a white man. He asks her to get up from her seat because black people are always supposed to sit in the back of the bus opposed to white. She'd been pushed enough. She refuses, starting the chain of events, eventually, a chain of, uh, starting the chain reaction of events, eventually leading to the all famous I Have a Dream speech by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This speech was the final inspiration African Americans needed push on and protest for equality, uh, and they got it done. The end of an era, of an era, black people were finally equal. Now black people had come a long way, but there were more roadblocks to come. Now we skip along to the time that the stereotype of a black man sprung about. From the 1990s to the 2000s, black people were looked at as, cri as criminals who have an unusual appetite for fried chicken, watermelon, and Kool-Aid. This was not seen as a bigger problem from the meme as just a little bit of name calling and everyone goes through it. Unfortunately, the silence was disrupted when a black man getting pulled over on the Los Angeles freeway uh, for speeding, he was on probation already for robbery and, was, and tried to escape the police leading to a high speed chase. He was eventually stopped and shared some words with the officers that were probably not very polite. 
As a response to this, the four uh, officers called him abusive names like the N-word, uh, tortured him with a taser, beat him, and shouted at him that he was just a stereotypical black man. This was the first time that we witnessed a stereotype take a big hit um, uh, in African American history. LA was furious. White or black citizens protested the city, pushing, pushing justice for their fellow community members. Uh, the LA police chief and officers were not found guilty in, in a later trial, and this made the chaos worse. Springing the, uh, springing the protests and the riots, leading to killing 55 and wounding over 2,000 people in LA. Even through all of this, the judges thought the stereotype was still true and he would not change um, his answer and find the officers guilty. But Minister Louis Frank Harren decides that the African Americans need to band back together to stop the fighting. He says that it is only, um, it is only proving the officers right when we are just classic black men if we do not stop rioting. He says these words in front of over a million black men who are willing to stand behind him um, and march the Million Man March. The march successfully brought the black community together once again, even though the officers were never found guilty. The stereotype of black people starts to fade as the white community members see how connected random strangers are because of something important that they all believe. Uh, now you've seen how black people across the nation have fought the stereotype. Taking the first steps away from slavery, defining through disrespect, and finally growing politics. Uh, Colin, Colin Powell is voted in the Secretary of State position, the first African American to hold that position. And in 2008, Barack Obama takes, uh, becomes the President of the United States. Destroying the stereotype for good. How can it still be true? An African American held the highest position in our government system. We fought our way little by little uh, to stop, uh, little by little to get to the top dog position, even if it meant we had to do some uncivilized things every now and then. Now you've seen how black people across the nation have fought the stereotype. From taking steps away from slavery through disrespect and finally growing into politics to dissemble the stereotype. But why should this matter to you? Why should you, as a white person, care so much about a black high schooler's history lesson? Simple, each one of you could easily become a parent to a black baby boy or a black baby girl. My mother did not plan on becoming a parent to a black baby. She's from a completely white family, but I can tell you that she loves me to the moon and back and that she would do anything for me. Put yourself in her position. Think about how you would feel knowing that your kid is going to school every day, getting marks in his hands their uh, kids are pulling his hair and he's being called the N-word. People say I'm not an ordinary black person, and that I'm not an ordinary black person, and that I look more white than black. Well, they're right. Uh, see, that's what makes me my own black person. While some may be off selling drugs, drinking, and, and, and drinking nothing but grape juice, I'm living my best life. In fact, I hate grape juice and everything about grape, especially cold medicine. Uh, my unordinariness started back when I was just a newborn baby. My mother thought I was going to be a girl, and she did not have a name picked out for a black baby boy. Uh, my grandma suggested Joshua, and my mom loved it. At the time, it was just a name, but it is so much more. Joshua means God is salvation. Joshua was the chosen one to defeat one of the biggest battles in Bible history and show his followers that God is the way, even in times of trouble. Joshua was the battle fighter. I am the battle fighter. Many of you uh, don't know this, but I keep this Afro pick in my pocket or in my backpack almost at all times uh, with the clenched fist because it reminds me of what my ancestors have done for me to be here in this white school without segregation. It reminds me of the tiny details that uh, have happened for me to be in this school and to be free. It reminds me that throughout this stereotype, no matter what people say and no matter what happens, I am not just a stereotypical black person. 